Hey everyone, welcome back to this new lesson. All right, now we are going to shift the idea of the independence work to our bass drum in this lesson. Now, a couple things about the bass drum. Number one, I would say that the volume and activity on the bass drum with jazz independence is probably not as busy as what you would do taking it from a snare drum standpoint. And there's probably more conversation between bass drum and snare drum than there is straight up bass drum. Of course, there's always different situations. If you start getting into a situation where there's a lot of improvisation, then there is gonna be more activity. And you wanna develop your foot with your independence to be you know, as free as possible. But I would say from a melodious standpoint, when you are working on picking certain notes out of a melody from an instrument that's playing that melody, uh, bass drum is probably not gonna be your first go-to, especially on a very active level. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the role of the bass drum does, cha does change dependent on where you are in the jazz era. So for instance, if you're playing a lot of big band, you're gonna walk more on the bass drum. Now, for those who don't understand what walking means, it's a term that reflects what your uh, bass player does, your stand-up bass player uh, who walks quarter notes. And a lot of times in a big band setting, you support that with your bass drum. And we usually call the technique involved in that, we call it feathering, which you would play it heel down and you lightly tap your bass drum head as light as possible, uh, maybe slightly pulling the beater off, just playing it really light, and I'll play that for you right now. One, two, three, four. Notice how light I'm playing those quarter notes. And it's sort of a, a tricky thing to do when you're playing your ride relatively loud and you're stomping on your hi-hat on two and four relatively loud uh, and you're trying to keep your foot soft. But that is the nature of the feathering line if you are playing all four chord notes. Now I'm gonna play that for you right now but keep in mind, this is just one form of independence that you would play with the bass drum. Okay, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. What I find is that a lot of students will automatically kind of go for that. When I ask them to play jazz, they'll play that four on the floor kind of concept with the bass drum against that. And I'll kind of give them a time out and say, well, now are we going for an older style, traditional big band sort of jazz, or are we going more for a small band uh, you know, setting? And once we start getting into that small band setting, especially when you start getting into bop playing in the early 50s, mid 50s, and it gets faster and more activity, and then very much uh, the uh, contemporary playing of the early 60s into the six, later 60s, the bass drum becomes more active. It becomes more of a, um, again, a melodious or independent instrument that is worked in between snare drum and bass drum. So, what I'm gonna do is play a couple of different uh, bass drum independent exercises that are similar to what we did with snare drum, and we're gonna concentrate more on those ands. And we'll start again with the and of one and move down the list. And if you remember, we talked about the idea of the ands being related to your ride pattern. The and of one and and of three are against the ride. The and of two and the and of four are with the ride. So keep that in mind. Here's your and of one. One, two, I uh, want two, three, four. And notice I'm tapping it pretty, pretty light. You know, I'm still, I still have that feathering concept in mind, even though I'm not playing all four quarter notes. It's not, you know, a rock style, so you have to play a little, little more laid back. Here's the and of two. One, two, I uh, want two, three. Moving on to the and of three. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, 
And finally, finishing up with the and of four. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. And in similar fashion that I did with the snare drum before, I'm gonna do the same thing with the bass drum, which is I'm gonna play all the ands right now. I'll start out a little slower, and then I'll move a little faster. Here you go. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. And slightly faster. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. And repeating what I said in the previous lesson with the snare drum, regarding all the syncopated type of figures, there's sort of an endless amount. And uh, a good place to start is with these ands, but if you really want to expand your language, move toward page 38 of syncopation up to page 45. There are eight exercises with all different melodies combining quarter notes and eighth notes. You put that melody on your bass drum, you play it against the, uh, the, the syncopated uh, ride pattern or the jazz ride pattern. Uh, and you could do the same thing with uh, Louis Belson's modern reading text in 4-4. Lots of melodies, lots of ideas to put against where you keep that steady and you move the bass drum against it. All right, for our next lesson, stay tuned. We're gonna talk about moving the bass drum and snare drum together.